about it, just afraid. He goes, well, coach, he says, you know, I've been evaluating them, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, and they're dead even. He goes, oh, okay, then we'll play them both. <laughs> he said, yeah, well, this could be interesting. <laughs> this is going to be uh, something unusual in the game of football. We're going to have both quarterbacks in there. And we'll really dance with them. Jimmy, he says, well, we'll do flip a coin, and Billy will score. If Billy wins it, he starts the game that day, and we flip the coin the next week, and if well, Jesse wins, Jesse starts. And then we all win him every time. Well, you know what happened on that one? We go undefeated. No, we go 10-1. Excuse me. We go 10-1. We lead the nation in total offense. I think Billy has 30 more total yards than Jesse. Total. That kind of tells you something else about Don Coriel. He just was unbelievable about being able to figure things out and make it simple and go with it. But again, I want to remind you all, think about it, gentlemen, those of you that are going to be playing the game and coaching the game, where it all came from. And honor the man. I honor him. I loved him. Always will. God bless each and every one of you.
He was all about I formation, power, and running. And, and we all learned a lot from that. And, you know, in every... Don was a football genius. And every genius has amazing concentration powers. And Don had amazing concentration powers. And when you have amazing concentration powers, you have some quirks that go with it. <laughs> and everyone, every player that ever played for him, coached with him, knows some of those quirks. You know, like there was a time he's doing a game plan, he's sitting in his desk, and right, 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 and food and eating wasn't a big deal with the Don. He didn't have time, so he reaches down in a drawer and he pulls out an apple and it's rotten. I mean, it, he, he ate like half of it three months ago. And he's written, and he's written, and, he's and he, he takes it, and I said, ah, that's rotten, you know? And I throws it, and, and he wasn't thinking about it. He wasn't thinking about the apple. He was, he was thinking about what he was doing. And his concentrated powers were, were amazing. He used to, he used to, he lived on top of a hill, and he had a long driveway, and then the street. So what would happen, he, on, on garbage day, he would put the garbage can in the back of his white station wagon, he had a white station wagon, he would drive it down to the bottom of the hill, you know, and then the quirks that go with concentration and go with genius, he would make a right turn and drive the garbage to work 90% of the time. And then, you talk about stick. We made him two days, right here in San Diego State, and, and after practice time, we'd, we'd all go out to dinner, so we'd get in his car. And one of those garbage days, man, you get in that car, and, and you'd pass out. I mean, you'd want to walk or run to dinner rather than have to down for a And then he did the same thing. The other trick was, look on top of the hill, and Elisa would come out with Mindy. Mindy was about four then. So the idea was Don would drive Mindy down the hill, let her off, she would walk back up, and Lisa would stand up and watch this whole thing take her hands. Well, just like the garbage, <laughs> Mindy wanted to ride to school. She didn't want to stay home. So Mindy would get in the back and she would be quiet. So Don would get down there, forget Mindy was in there. Now this would happen, this would happen at least twice a week. And Don would come into work and, and he had Mindy. And, and then he would have to call Lisa and say, I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry I didn't. And, and I got Mindy, well, of course, Lisa knew he had Mindy. Lisa was watching from up there and watching him take that right and not let Mindy off and wait for it. So now, poor Lisa, being the great one she was, and, and she never said, and all she did was smile, and she was one of the great people. And then she would drive and pick up Mindy. And, and Don would say, Mindy, you, and he, he loved Mindy like, you know, like you could tell that, that he loved his, his granddaughter. And you know, he couldn't get mad at her, but you know, he would just shake his head and, and he would apologize. They kind of get mad at Mindy. And then the whole thing would be like two or three days later, we'd have the same thing. <laughs> but that was Don, and that was concentration, and that was from a genius. And that, you know, as I was saying, that we all owe so much to him. And you can tell the, the players, the coaches, that if you ever played for him or you ever coached for Don, he had respect for you and he had love for you. And it was a respect and a love that didn't go away. One of the jobs that I had as a defensive coordinator and assistant was I was in charge of summer jobs. So all the players had to have summer jobs. So now what I would do is I would take the best summer job and then I would give it to the best player. Then the next summer job, the next best player, the next best player. So anyway, the, the best job back in those days was the Coca-Cola. So I have the Coca-Cola job. And it was, it was going to go to Hazen Moses. He was our best player coming in. 
So Don comes up to me and he says, you got that job for Coke Pot? I said, I said, yeah, it's the best one we got. I'm going to give it to everybody. He's the number one guy. He said, he said, no, give it to Rod Dowhart. Oh, Rod Dowhart. He graduated. He can't play for us. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Even Moses is going to be, he's going to be our star. That's, that's what we are. That's who we are. We need players. And he goes, no, he said, Rod, Rod uh, just got cut by the 49ers. And uh, he's married, and his wife's pregnant. He said, you need to. You know, I never thought that way in my life. I mean, I never did. And Don, you know, as everyone says, was a great competitor. But where a lot of people do what's best for them, and a lot of times, what's best for the team. Don did what was right. Don was right. Jerry and I were 
visiting with Don and Elise up in Roche Harbor. And, uh, you know, Coach had a little <laughs> speaking deal there. Uh, and we kept hearing him say, How booty, let's get some more wine, will you, booty? And, you know. <laughs> And so Jerry is just the sweetest person in the whole world. And she said, Coach, are you, are you saying booty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell, uh, uh, one of the kids, uh, Kelly or Cutter or uh, Lonnie, they, they couldn't, Moody, that's supposed to be Moody, it's German for mother or something. And, uh, hell, I, hell, I, 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 I just call her booty. a word he could pronounce very well, and that's really how he would like for us all to remember him, just as our friend, and isn't that rare? The football players in attendance here will attest to the rarity of that, whether you are a lowly bench warmer or a star quarterback, a graduate assistant, or an offensive coordinator, Don thought of all of us as his friend. And we just heard from one of them, Jim Hannafin, obviously, one of his longtime friends, and, and I so often have asked about Coach and why was he so successful, what made him so unique, and the word simplicity comes to mind. Not simple, but simplicity. In his system and in his approach to his coaching staff, the way he taught them to teach us and the way he coached us. My first uh, two-minute drill with, with Don is when the quarterback goes over to the sidelines at the end of the first half and he's standing there. And, it's very important, you know, he's getting the plays that they're going to run. And uh, Hannafin is on the headset and he's talking to Gibbs upstairs. And Zampezi's sitting upstairs next to Gibbs. And, uh, the, and uh, Hannafin is relaying the message down to me. And, and he says, uh, okay, between the puffs of cigarettes. For you. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, dangerous. Uh, we're going to run. He used to call me dangerous. I don't know why. <laughs> all those interceptions I threw, but... Uh, <laughs> Alright, we're going to run uh, 844, Ricky, okay? Now this is what you do. You look for Charlie on that skinny post. If you get the ball in over the linebacker's head, hit him on that post. But if it's taken away, they rotate that way. Look for Kellen on the crossing route. Now, the crossing route, the middle linebacker is back into the crossing route, then you've got JJ on the, on the dig route deep there. Now, if the strong safety takes that away, then you've got Capaletti sneaking out in the flat, you got Muncie behind him on the on the rip. You got that? <laughs> things that's my mind. I've just heard from Coach Hannafin. Joe Gibbs has sent this play down. Zambezi was helping him up in the booth. And I haven't heard from Coriel. So I'm running back out to the huddle because the referee says, okay, time to go out. You know, let's go. Hey, hey. And play. And, and uh, I get this tug on my jersey. And I turn around. And I don't see anybody. <laughs> and I, oh, there he is. You know. coaching style was how positive it, he was with all of us. And, you know, there were times when I would start a game and the first one would be in the first row of the stands, the second one would be incomplete at the dirt of somebody else, and, and then they bring the punt team out. And then we get the ball back, and the first ball I throw is intercepted for a touchdown the other way. And, and uh, I'm sitting over on the sidelines, and I have my head swimming, you know, I, well, well, I can't. He comes over and says, yeah, you all right, Danny? I can't, hit the, I can't hit the barn today. Well, hell, Danny, you got 40 more throws to go.
Saturday, Saturday night meetings and how, how great they were, and they were great. Uh, <laughs> because Coach, would, we would have our walkthrough on Saturday morning, and then uh, he and Elisa would have, head up to Mount Laguna and uh, hike around and then get really thirsty. And so he would... <laughs> <laughs> so he would, he would come to our team meeting at 9 o'clock and, and we, were, we had been pretty thirsty at dinner too. So we were ready. And this was our first game as, with him as our head coach and we are playing the Raiders. And the Raiders always you know, killed us and they were so good and the coach was so great. He had so many great players. And, and uh, Coriel could sense that we were, uh, you know, scared to death. <laughs> So he reaches in his back pocket and he pulls out the Raider media guy. And he goes, I want to read some of this to you guys. <laughs> Opens up the first page and goes, Commitment to excellence. <laughs> Pride and poise. <laughs> Who the hell they think they are? was just like yours. <laughs> but it got better because he opened the first page, or what was the first page? It was about, I think you were about the fourth or fifth page, coach. <laughs> and he goes, no, let me, look, John Madden. <laughs> I used to take him and the garbage to work every day.